Hey everyone, my name is Savarish, I'm 14 years old, and I'm super passionate about virtual and augmented reality. Phones are starting to get outdated. They're 2D and serve as kind of a distraction in our lives at this point. And when I first got into software and game development, I thought, why should I build in 2D when I can build in 3D? VR and AR was the perfect means to bring my 3D content to life. After learning a ton about virtual and augmented reality, I realized that eventually I wanted to be part of building the future of VR and AR. Virtual reality right now is used for gaming and marketing and entertainment. Augmented reality is being used for, is starting to build practical applications with it, but we're nowhere near what we need to have for proper VR and AR experiences. But what I realized is we shouldn't be using VR and AR for these sort of applications. We should be using them to solve some of the world's biggest problems. And when you look at that, the four of some of the world's biggest problems include poverty, inequality, travel, and security. Poverty is a lack of money to live a fulfilling life, and VR and AR can help to solve this. Inequality is discrimination by gender, race, color, and many more factors. Distance is really starting to limit us right now, especially as we're getting digital, and VR can also help to remove these limitations. Cybersecurity is becoming extremely important, especially as right now we're in the digital era, and once we have 3D content, it's super important to keep these digital worlds safe. So when I thought about these huge problems and how they can be solved, my vision is the creation of alternate and parallel worlds. And alternate worlds is creating new digital realities, and they're essentially an enhanced replica of our real world. The ability to perform the same task that we would within the real world, except there's a twist to it, and we're going to be able to have superpowers within these alternate worlds. So when you look at what impact these alternate worlds can have on us, we can first look at work. Our jobs and career take up a lot of time in our daily lives. People in poverty conditions are working for almost their entire lives, just working, and don't have the ability to actually enjoy their lives. So let's look at work again. So what is the main product of work? Income. And income generates money for our personal expenses. And when you look at two of the top personal expenses, they're housing and education. Affordable housing has become a prominent issue lately. Cost of housing is based on the proximity of the land to a core location within a city like downtown. Teleportation within an alternate world can allow for us to have no time in between getting from one place to another, and this can allow for a cost of housing to go down by a lot. Education is required to get this world out of poverty. If we can't teach these people who are in poverty and get them to careers in some of the world's biggest companies, they'll never be able to come out of poverty. The cost of education is also due to location and because there's so many entities who are working on the same universities or high schools. It's also because professors are spread all around the world. Education within a virtual world can be completely centralized, which would bring the cost of education down. Transportation. Imagine not having to wait in traffic for hours or fly across the world to get to your end destination. This takes so much time out of our lives. Location essentially becomes immaterial within an alternate world because it's completely digital and we're able to get wherever we want in a blink of an eye. Security. Alternate worlds are completely digital and they're super vulnerable to cyber attacks. Actions can be stored on the blockchain to make sure all everything within these alternate worlds are kept safe and secure. Love and belonging. So I live in Toronto with my parents and my brother. The rest of my family are all in India. It's super hard for me to get there every year and keep my connection going with all of my family in India. Alternate worlds can allow for us to travel to literally anywhere within the world. And when haptics become a reality, we can really feel a sense of love and belonging no matter where we are. So parallel worlds. So this is the next part of this vision, and this is the ability to alter our existing realities with digital interfaces. We can seamlessly integrate AR into our environments and make digital objects and interfaces feel real. 
So let's first look at personalization. A lot of us are not satisfied with the world around us, and we want to make it our perfect version of the world. Augmented reality can allow for us to do that. Using parallel worlds, we can also augment the way we see people. We don't need discrimination anymore in this world, and we can get rid of that using augmented reality. Right now, our smartphones are interfering with our lives. They aren't integrated with it. We're spending a lot of our time on these small screens, and they're not part of our lives. AR can allow for us to completely integrate all our digital interfaces with our lives and our real-world environments. Space is starting to become sp scarce, and less fortunate are unable to live fulfilling lives. Parallel worlds can allow for us to reduce the space that every one of us are using by allowing us to work, relax, play, and sleep in the exact same place. Multi-purposing one space for all our tasks is the future with this parallel, these parallel worlds and can allow for the less fortunate to finally be able to find their own homes. So when you look at the three main impacts of alternate and parallel worlds, their cost, time, and accessibility. With alternate and parallel worlds, the cost of almost everything is dropping. Time is super precious, and virtual and augmented worlds are, allow, are gonna allow us to use this time very efficiently. Accessibility. So the world will be a much more accessible place with alternate and parallel worlds, literally allowing us to get to anywhere within the world at the blink of an eye. So let's go back to these problems. All of these problems can be solved with alternate and parallel worlds, and we, and we can see that this future is really possible. But we need to enhance our current technologies to eventually build this future. Haptic feedback is the sense of touch and feel. And this is just going past visual AR. We're going to need to be able to touch things within the virtual and augmented world to make it feel as real as possible. True augmented reality is augmenting everything around us and all our senses. Computer vision is super, super important for augmented reality if we want to integrate AR into our lives as, as seamlessly as possible. We need to be able to understand our environments and objects and accurately superimpose and integrate digital interfaces. Eventually, we'll be able to blend digital with real to create amazing AR experiences. Our UX interactions are currently not efficient at all. Imagine if you could just think and interact with VR and AR. This is the future of UX interactions with brain-computer interfaces, and this can practically be used at any time and allow for you to perform actions much faster than you are able to right now. Headset miniaturization is probably the most important thing within the industry right now to finally get consumers to start buying these headsets. We need to start having a balance of form and function and, ha and have the ability to get these consumers to finally start adopting VR and AR. Well, then we can eventually build these alternate and parallel worlds. Exoskeletons. So this is really far from where we are right now, but this is really important to build these alternate and parallel worlds. This is essentially the next level of haptic technology. Imagine the ability to sit on a virtual chair that's not even actually there. That's what exoskeletons can help us do and allow for us to finally multi-purpose spaces, like I talked about earlier with parallel worlds. Light fields. So this is something that we're all talking about right now, but we need to make sure that this becomes a reality so augmented reality can look really good and realistic. Light fields are the key to finally making AR very realistic and bringing it to the market. Spatial data. So integrating content into the real world is super important. And in the, in the future, we're going to be building a whole global database of these spatial maps. We're going to be using this to integrate these digital interfaces with their space. And we're going to be transferring this data using 5G technology. So I believe that virtual and augmented reality are the next wave of computing. And I think we should start moving from 2D technology to 3D technology, because it integrates with our lives much better than how it does right now. I think that the future of humanity and how we're going to live lies in these alternate and parallel worlds. And dreaming about these technologies is, isn't just going to cut it. I want to take this sci-fi dream, turn it into a reality, and revolutionize the VR and AR industry. Thank you. <laughs>